Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice, here with a brand new series, Mass Effect. It's one of my favorite game series of all time. Um, I have to say that uh, big thanks goes out to The Zone for uh, introducing me to this. Um, he did introduce me to this series twice. <laughs> the first time I didn't take to it because I had some controller issues and I blamed the game and just did not take to it on the first uh, attempt. I came back to it again later on on his uh, suggestion and uh, I was very glad that I did. Um, also uh, a thanks to my uh, sister-in-law Helen for the gift of this trilogy for the PC as I've played this on the uh, on consoles in the past. Now, essentially, I'm going to be doing a playthrough on this, and thanks to the wonders of editing, I'll be able to take out a good chunk of any of the boring, mundane stuff. Uh, I'll be sure to uh, include any detail that may come up. But keep in mind, those that haven't seen any of the Mass Effect gameplay, this is uh, a good portion movie, and a uh, lesser so first-person shooter. But you're, well, not really first-person shooter, third-person shooter. You're uh, looking over your character's shoulders most of the time. Uh, so uh, there is a very large story point to this game, uh, as well as the others. And it's my intention to uh, continue playing through all three of these and sharing my experience with you. It's been quite some time, and I really don't remember the controls, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. But I'll try to, uh, as I said, edit out any issues. Now there is a little something extra I plan on adding into this. Uh, recently I've been uh, really interested in uh, learning more about the voice actors behind a lot of these games. Uh, a lot of the games I've played, movies I've seen, um, animation, and so on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be posting up a bit of tidbit, uh, a tidbit here and there of uh, the voice actors as we come across them. Now, sometimes you may hear a quick clip here and there, uh, or I may miss somebody in here, so please don't feel that this is going to be complete uh, in any way. But I will try and catch as many as I can. And it's not going to be a complete list of all their works. It's just going to be something so that you uh, have a point of reference. Uh, I may end up uh, speaking a little bit about it as I may pause the game for that time, or come back and edit it in. Something to that effect. We'll see how it goes. But I hope you'll uh, enjoy the uh, series that I'm about to get into here. So let's get started with Mass Effect, the first of the trilogy. Now I have played this before. Welcome I've already set to my military database. I've already set my options Classified as well. information requested. Now, it's pretty entertaining at the beginning. Essentially, you, the creation of your adult character is kind of corrupt, and therefore it enables you, in a kind of tongue-in-cheek way, to create your character. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. And I do kind of split what I play between males and females. I do tend to pick a female character more often. So I'm going to be doing a uh, custom female here. Don't worry, I'll be uh, very quick about Please how it's set up. To access your profile. But I am going to have her as Valena Shepard. Warning, data corruption detected. <laughs> and once again, it introduces the... Please uh, reconstruct profile. The idea that you are able to create your character from this information. Now, in my first playthrough I ever did, I remember I was Earthborn. I always hated the whole idea of a colonist just because, I don't know, I, I seem like I might be coming off as uh, uh, unacceptable to the populace or something. So I figured this time I might try being a spacer. Uh, much more military focus. Confirm psychological profile. And I was a soul survivor in my first playthrough as well. Uh, I never really liked the ruthless one, which is a uh, very uh, straightforward, cut and dry, um, more dark sided. Uh, I plan on going for a bit uh, good of a character. Uh, yes, my English was really bad there. Please forgive me. But I'm going to be a war hero, following with the whole military idea here. Confirm military specialization. 
Uh, and as well, my first one, I ended up playing as an infiltrator, which is a lot of technology base, as well as sniper rifles. And I really do like sniper rifles, but they do tend uh, to kind of bring down gameplay a bit, as well as I never was able to explore the uh, biotic abilities before. Uh, now, I was considering going for a straight Adept, which is uh, heavy biotics with a little bit of tech options. But I think instead I'm going to go for a Sentinel, and that way I'll be a fairly balanced character of biotics and tech. Uh, not a lot of uh, guns in this, but that's alright. I am fine with a pistol. Confirm facial identification. So I'll do a very slight change, and we'll be right back. And there we go. This is uh, a resemblance of the character that I've played as before. Now, obviously the uh, options for <laughs> having your character... Come on, look back at the center. There we go. Having your character go from one game to the next uh, get a bit sketchy, but uh, we'll just see what we can manage. Profile reconstruction complete. There we go. Valina Shepard, Spacer, War Hero, Sentinel. Identification confirmed. Now I am going to keep my combat difficulty on normal. I do not want auto level ups. I do not want any target assist, but it does not give you that option. So I am going to uh, keep it on low. Uh, squad power usage, I don't want them using them unless I tell them to. So I'm going to keep that off. Subtitles, I'm keeping on for you guys. And auto saves are always helpful. Well, what about Shepard? She's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of her life. Military service runs in the family. Both her parents were in the Navy. She proved herself during the Blitz. Held off enemy forces on the ground until reinforcements arrived. She's the only reason Elysium is still standing. We can't question her courage. Humanity needs a hero. And Shepard's the best we've got. I'll make the call. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emission sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. 
You always expect the worst. Well, bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so... What are we doing here? Joker! Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? I'm on my way. <laughs> is it me or does the Captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. <laughs> so, uh, there are always little tongue-in-cheek interactions. This is one of the uh, many times <laughs> whoopsie, that you can actually, uh, thank you, you can actually um, talk to people, wander around the ship, uh, and the more you talk to people, the more uh, that their own little stories will often end up uh, coming out. So, we'll be doing a lot of that going forward. For instance, let's talk to Joker. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. Alright, nothing really serious there, though. So, don't want to uh, end up crouching here. You can see a quick look around. I told you, I just saw him. He marched by like he was on a mission. These inspectors are always on a mission. And we're getting dragged, right along with him. Relax, Presley. You gotta give yourself an ulcer. <laughs> here I am being all sneaky and stuff. Let me get away from this. Alright. All right, let's talk to Navigator Presley. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Hmm. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Hmm. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, ma'am. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated Special Forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. <laughs> you don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. <laughs> and for talking to people, you also always uh, tend to get experience when it's uh, been at least somewhat successful in obtaining uh, information. As you notice there, uh, we were able to learn a little bit of back history about some of the other characters that we're about to go talk to. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. What do you think, Commander? 
We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Mm hmm Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Hmm. Well, let's see what he says about it. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. <laughs> what do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. <laughs> so, uh, finding corrupt specters would not be a big surprise, I guess. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But... When I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. And that's another reason why I did not choose the uh, colonist one, because I didn't want to come off as Jenkins there. Eh. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime's one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's gotta be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he'll do fine. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself in the Blitz. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Uh. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not gonna screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Likely. There are a lot of hot-headed characters throughout this story, and I'll try not to spoil anything going forward, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Huh? A salute? Very nice. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to, Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I've never been there. But you know of it. It's become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Hmm. What's the payload, Captain? A research team on Eden Prime. Unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. Hmm. What else can you tell me? This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Hmm. Wow. Usually, be playing the role-playing the character I am, being kind of just a military personnel, you wouldn't ask the questions as much as follow the orders. But I am curious about that. 
Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. Hmm. Funny enough, I feel regret for asking that question, because it seemed very naive and selfish that we would hold it for ourselves while I'm talking to Nihilus right there. Hmm. All right. Well, let's find out why. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. You held off an enemy assault during the Blitz single-handed. You showed not only courage, but also incredible skill. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Hmm. Oh, okay. I guess I'm surprised that he did. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Oh. Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Once again, I regret the question, because I wasn't trying to come off as racist. I was just curious. And rather surprised that he would actually throw my name into the ring. So, I guess we'll just continue on and ignore that that ever happened. Just tell me what I have to do. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Well, let's find out a little bit about these Protheans besides the fact that they launched us light years ahead. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. Hmm. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Mm -hmm. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology. Even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Hmm. Okay, so therefore, me being indoctrinated possibly into the Spectres is a good excuse to go check out this beacon. All right, fair enough. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Nice, just elbow the guy in the face. We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. I repeat, heavy casualties. We can't get evac. 
They came out of nowhere. We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Bringing the new boy Jenkins with us. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. Will do. And I think I'm going to call it right there. We're just getting into combat, so I'm probably going to want to end up refreshing myself with the controls before I bore you guys with me just running around throwing mines on my own teammates. So, until next time, see ya.